Look at the kink. Holy shit. These lines are gonna kill the turbo. Look at these. That one's not as bad, but that one, whoo. These bolts here are 8.8s. You look in the stamping on the head of the bolt, sometimes they're 10.9s. The 8.8s are 18 foot pounds. How you know that the clutch is actually done and ready is look how smooth that goes. Boom, clutch assembled. That looks good. We're done, clutch is all torqued, it's lock tighted, it's ready to go. Uh, the motor is actually ready to throw in the car now. The last thing we have to do though that really sucks is that guy right there. It's just so much easier to put it on now than trying to balance the motor in its location there and get it all loaded in. Time to drop the motor in. Look at it. So as this goes, I tend to leave my turbo on. I leave the steering shaft connected. I leave my engine mount on. I make it, I've got it to a point where it's pretty easy now. The trick to doing it is just running a ratchet strap down to your header. And then once you lift the motor, you can turn it vertically. And then it all clears going in. And then you degree it back to BMW lean as you set it down on its motor mounts. Okay, let's just do it. Okay, that took no time at all, quite honestly. All we had to do was ratchet strap the motor vertical by hooking to the headers there. Run two of them so that you can loosen one and then the other, one then the other, and bring it back down onto its motor mount. But otherwise, like this, we did it with the turbo, with the engine mount, with the steering rack still in it, trans on, it's quick this way. Now I just gotta start bolting everything up. I gotta put a bunch of bolts in to the transmission cross member and then lock down the motor mounts and this will be in. All right, Carlos, Vlad, and Chris just left, so I'm back to the wiring side of things. I've started getting everything basically organized and tucked away. Uh, the only wires we have left to tighten down is a ground line under there and then run my new ground line. And then once I throw the intake manifold on, we'll have intake air temp, throttle position sensor, and idle control valve. It is Monday morning and the dyno is Thursday morning. We have very little bolts left in that box. We are doing well. Coil pack. One thing I really like about my nose panel is that my catch can and my oil cooler 
and their lines all just stay together. So you just pop the, all the bolts off of the caps themselves here on the rails and then the two here and here and that can all come out. All right, let's replace these injector O-rings on the top hats. So clearly that shouldn't come off that easily, right? These top hats on these injectors are not from ID, I don't think. The uh, buddy of mine gave them to me and the O-rings on them literally shrunk from the ethanol when it was sitting for just a few months when I did everything. So what I'm gonna do is pull all these out, take them to my friend's uh, shop, get new O-rings for them that are E85 safe, and we're going to go ahead and clean all six of them. Worth giving them a clean with ethanol. You know, you never know. Bag them individually, one through six, label, and we're out of here. I just wanna make a note of these Rally Road, uh, Bosch style, I guess, or IDX style injector or I think it's EV1 or something. I forgot the exact term. But if you run injectors like these in an M50 manifold, you've got to buy these Rally Road spacers here. If they face up like this, it's like a gap and then it plugs so that the injector can't drop too deep into the M50 manifold, lose its seal here and blow fuel out. It is a great way to keep fuel leaks. Now I didn't think about this, but we'll get that fixed as well. And then this should be a bulletproof fuel system in terms of leaks at the injector. Okay, back in the shop, got a huge bag of clean injectors. I took them up to Matt at uh, Evolved, like y'all saw, and he tested these out to 1% uh, of each other, so they were very much clean. Uh, and we, then we replaced the O-rings with E85 ones, the green ones there, and then he gave me an extra bag of them just in case we have any issues in the future. So for now, I'm gonna call it fixed, but we're gonna keep an eye on this like a wear item, and if we have to, replace them every six months or so, then we will. I don't want to do that. I want to find a way to keep, I guess if I'm driving it all the time, it might not be an issue. We'll see, but fixed. Let's go ahead and throw these in. When it comes to installing any injectors or anything like this with an O-ring that I want to survive, I do like to use a uh, so glide. See, these seats are so much tighter. You guys remember the how it came off? <laughs> Ethanol is a monster if you leave it if you leave it sitting in the rails. I'll never do that again. All set up, ready to drain these lines and just check them out. This is just one I put together real quick and hooked to the feed line. It goes down into the pan right here, as you can see. I've got a nice little cup there to catch some ethanol so that we can test the content of it with that little shaker. Fuses in, everything here is on. Don't make a mess. All right, that was good. Let's do that one or two times. Good, nice and clean. I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys down, do that one more time, and catch some fuel for an ethanol content test. Fuel rail's hooked up. All the lines are hooked up. Everything in terms of the fuel system should be hooked up. So this went really badly last time, but let's try and prime it and see if these injectors hold with their new setups. Do it again, get full pressure here. There's like 45 PSI or so. So the car has a flex fuel or an ethanol sensor wired into the ECU. And that's something we're getting set up on this round of tuning. That being said, it's always nice to be able to check. So these things are fun. We can see what the content looks like on a manual tester and then compare it to when we get the gauge set up going. So you fill this up right here, that blue line with water, and then red line 
with your ethanol. Okay, that's right up to the line. So let's go ahead and give this a shake. Let's let it sit up right. We'll come back to that here in a second. I'm throwing the radiator in currently, hooking up the lines for it. As we put stuff together, I'm just realizing all these trick little parts I have and I wanna show them with you guys because they work so dang well. This Hero Clutch fan, if you break a blade, it's not gonna sling the blade because look, the diesel fans have this outer ring. Now I just made a little spacer right there. You can see it to help because it likes to sit a little further in. There it is. Just following back up on this real quick. We have ourselves some pretty decent ethanol in the tank, even after sitting for some time. So like E78, it looks like. Almost E80. Well, I'm out of bolt bags over there. So I think I'm done. I really do think I'm done. Uh, all we really need to do now is add coolant uh, or water and water water and then add oil because I had to drain out what we had to make a few fixes and flush the system and all that. So we'll add some star first start oil and we'll get two sets of that. So we do a first start up to temp, flush it, and then second one driving it up and down the road for a while. And then we'll switch it to really good oil for the dyno day. We're gonna start it up. We'll uh, get it idling up to temp. We'll shut it down, let it cool down. We'll torque the head studs. And then we will be ready to tackle whatever ECU issue we have with the power drain. Uh, we'll figure that out before the dyno as well. First start day. Uh, not much to say other than let's get to it. We have to go ahead and do water, oil, ATF, and then just prime everything, check everything, make sure we have no leaks uh, in the fuel system. Now that I have the injectors done and everything there is hooked up, and we'll go ahead and get this thing running. Damn it. All right, tiny leak off the thermostat housing. So we'll get this knocked out real quick and we'll be back to uh, putting oil in it. This is why we do our tests. You can go ahead and throw the hoses back in, throw the clutch fan back in and fill it back up and see if it leaks again. I don't see any leakage. All right, that's cool. That's cool, buddy. That's cool. Making progress, good stretch. Relays out for the fuel pump. Let's try and get some oil pressure. It's gonna take a little bit of this probably. Nothing yet. One trick we've learned to help build oil pressure on new motors. And I've done this before already, but we went a couple cranks and it didn't. So just fill right here for a little bit since I'm not full on my pan. And that can help to prime it. Right. 10 PSI. So, we're ready. Let's get the fuel relay hooked in. We'll get fuel pressure. And we'll start it. Anxiety's up. But let's go. Brakes and clutch are good. Can you pass me the computer? Thank you. Build some oil pressure. All right, system on. I saw oil pressure because it's dropping back down on the computer when we connected. Ready?
miss. I feel like I hear a misfire. What? Oh. There's my misfire. Did it fall out? Did that plug fall out? Huh, we missed that the whole time? Yeah. Ooh, so much better. So much better. feels good. I really thought that that wasn't going to go as smoothly as it did. So let's hope the oil looks good after because that felt great. So game plan now is to let it cool down completely. Uh, so we'll leave it for the evening. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow. We will torque the head studs to 85 foot pounds again, just retorque after the heat cycle and possibly check the lash on the cams while we're in there just for shits and giggles and throw it all back together. But now it's time to pull apart my OEM M50 harness that I have tucked under here and try and figure out why that ECU is only seeing 12 volts when the rest of the system is seeing 13.5. So I really thought the grounding was good enough. Uh, I'm sure if y'all have any ideas, y'all will tell me, but that's, I thought the grounds were the issue and it's not. So I'm gonna pull the harness apart and start, I mean, I'll start at the battery and I will work my way all the way through through the system checking until I make it to the fuel pump or the EC relay and we'll see if it has something to do with that. Honestly, I really, it's a good place, man. I'm at a good place. I really appreciate everybody who came through, everyone who helped. I mean, all the advice I get from all my friends when I do these things, it's always, I learn something new every time we do one of these. So again, thanks to everybody, except Carlos. Have a great evening.